Hello, I'm Michael Louis. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. Today, as part of our series on professional ethics in engineering, I'd like to tell you the story of William LeMessure and the Citicorp Center. William LeMessure was a distinguished structural uh, engineer who designed this uh, structure for the Citicorp Center uh, skyscraper in New York City in the mid-1970s. This is uh, how the Citicorp Center looks uh, today. It's uh, one of the tallest buildings in Manhattan. Notice that the building is supported by nine story high columns, uh, as you can see here, that are actually on the four sides of the building rather than at the corners. Let's take a closer look here. The reason for this is that each column, w the reason for placing each column in the middle of each side of the building rather than at the four corners was that uh, one corner of the tower uh, is cantilevered over a church that occupied one corner of the city block. So the building itself occupies most of a city block, but there's an existing church on the corner. To solve this problem, the measure decided to put supporting columns at the four sides of the building, and he also designed an innovative system of wind braces uh, with 48 chevron-shaped sh steel members welded together to form the superstructure. Uh, notice how the uh, diagonal braces here direct all the weight toward the columns that are in the centers of the four sides. In June of 1978, a question from an engineering student led Me LeMessure to examine his design again. His new calculation showed that under some wind conditions, the forces that the braces had to withstand were 40 percent larger than his original calculations had shown. Uh, even with the extra stresses, the building would have been strong enough to withstand the expected loads, and even though it would sway a little bit, it should uh, still have uh, withstood the, um, uh, the wind forces. Um, but just weeks before uh, the uh, phone call from the student, uh, LeMessure had learned that during the construction of the building, the welded joints in the superstructure had been replaced with bolted joints. This replacement had been approved by other engineers from his firm. Further calculations showed that the bolted joints would be dangerously weak when the building was subjected to strong winds. How strong a storm would be required to cause the structure to fail? Meteorological records for New York indicated that a storm with sufficiently strong winds would tear the joints apart uh, on average once every 16 years. That is, once every 16 years, there would be a strong storm enough, a storm strong enough uh, that it would tear the joints apart and the building would fall down. Taking personal responsibility, LeMessure quickly developed a plan to solve this problem. He determined that the joints could be secured by welding two inch thick steel plates over 200 of the joints. This solution would be expensive, but it was essential to ensure the integrity of the building. Fortunately, Walter Riston, the CEO of Citicorp, that is the chief executive officer of Citicorp, was supportive and he assigned two vice presidents to work with LeMessure to manage the re repairs. They hired workers to make the repairs and to fit the building with gauges to measure the strain on the individual structural members. They informed city building inspectors and they met with local disaster relief agencies to plan for evacuation if necessary. They consulted with meteorologists to provide daily weather forecasts of expected winds, especially as a hurricane was sweeping up the east coast during the repairs. By now, newspapers were beginning to hear rumors about the building. A reporter from the New York Times called LeMessure, but later that day when LeMessure returned the call, all newspapers on the si in the city had just gone on strike. The strike lasted until after all of the repairs ha had been completed and uh, nobody uh, outside this small circle of people uh, heard about the problems with the Citicorp uh, building. Work welders worked seven nights a week to prevent disturbance of the tenants. LeMessure directed the work calculating which joints were most critical so that the most essential welds would be completed first. All told, the job took two months. After repairs, engineers estimated that the building could withstand a storm that was expected only once every 700 years. So after the repairs, the Citicorp Center was arguably the most structurally sound building in the city. The total costs for the repairs were never revealed, but they exceeded $8 million. Citicorp did not begin litigation until after the repairs had been made, and they settled for the $2 million that was the limit of LeMessure's professional liability insurance. The next year, when the insurance firm threatened to increase his premium, LeMessure dispatched his deputy to visit the insurance firm's headquarters, where he told the executives, after how well we have behaved, how dare you increase our premium? The insurance premium did not increase, but instead went down. 
The measure sums up this case. You have a social obligation in return for getting a license and being regarded with respect. You're supposed to look beyond the interests of yourself and your client to society as a whole. And the most wonderful part of my story is that when I did it, nothing bad happened. So LeMessurier's uh, case here is an excellent example of how an engineer takes personal responsibility for uh, a project or product even after it has been delivered and even after the work is officially finished. Some references here. Uh, the story is in Joe Morgenstern's article in The New Yorker in 1995.